Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, my name is Trevor. I'm a professional motorcycle racer in the Moto America Twins Cup Series, and I am also a student at Kennesaw State University studying physics. So I read this book, so you don't have to. I actually probably need that. <laughs> so all of motorcycle riding revolves around one thing really, which is friction, which can be interchanged with the word traction. So before we learn about friction and traction, we need to learn a little thing about forces. So we have this book right here. Now this book isn't moving. It could be considered it's in a balanced state, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any forces being applied to it right now. This book is actually pushing on the earth, but we know it's in a balanced state, which means that the earth is also pushing back up onto the book equally. The more I push on the book, the more the earth is pushing back up on me. Now the same can be applied for friction, traction. As I start to push on the book like this, friction and traction is pushing back on me equally. It isn't until I push hard enough where we finally break traction, where we surpass the frictional limits. Now the same thing can be said for when you're pushing at an angle, right? But now there's two things that are happening. I'm adding force into the horizontal or sliding direction as well as I'm pushing more into the earth. But that force is kind of split into two different ways. So I push right here and it takes a little bit more force to get it to slide versus if I was only pushing into the horizontal direction. And the same can be said for riding a motorcycle. We have this motorcycle here. As we look, the more and more that we turn it, the more the forces are gonna be going into that horizontal direction. Let's bring it down here so we can see it better. So the more and more that you add lean angle is just similar to the book where the more and more I go to the side, the easier it is to break that static coefficient. Now the other thing is that adding more force is gonna make it lose traction easier. So that's where trail braking comes in. You want to do the majority of your braking straight up and down. And then as you begin to tip it over, add lean angle and tip into the turn, you want to give up a little bit of that brake pressure and exchange it for lean angle. Now, obviously the less brake that you can use or the later that you can brake is all going to add to your speed, add to, add to your lap times. And essentially the most important thing is that you ride comfortably and you don't push past your own limits. We know there's physical limits of the motorcycle, but we also have motor er, limits as motorcyclists ourselves. Another reason why trail braking can be so useful and helpful uh, from a speed, but also safety aspect is when you are hard on the brakes, hard on the front tire, what you're doing, you're forcing the tire into the ground. And literally what's happening as you can see, that tire patch is actually expanding. So you're gonna have more traction. You're gonna have more grip when you're in the middle of the turn. Now again, it's a trade-off because you don't wanna be hard on the brakes in the, in the apex of the turn because yeah, then you're gonna overcome that static coefficient of friction and you are gonna lose traction. Uh, but <clears throat> in the sense of carrying it into the turn, you wanna keep that front patch on the front as large as possible for as long as possible as you go into the turn. And another important thing that will likely drop up to five seconds off of your lap time is if you go to pureattituderacing.net, go to the shop and check out our new merch. We got caps, we got shirts with the, with the year on the back, 2021. And also my personal favorite, look at these bad boys. These Pure Attitude Racing socks, I think those alone, three seconds off of your lap time. So head there right now. The final purpose of trail braking that I wanna talk about is a concept of keeping the front loaded for as long as possible. As you're going into a turn, you're braking, you're loading up the front end, you're shifting all the way to the front. When you shift all that weight to the front, it makes it so it's easier to turn in. You're able to tip in even quicker you're able to, in the middle of the turn, if you have just a little bit of brake and a little bit of the front loaded, it's easier to tighten the turn up if needed. 
So I'm not saying go out and just grab a bunch of front brake in the middle of the turn. In fact, the exact opposite. Go out, learn at your own pace, ride at what is comfortable to you, and realize that not every motorcycle is set up the same way. Just because your buddy is able to trail brake until this point doesn't mean that you can. Every, every bike is going to react differently and every rider is going to ride differently. So it's, it's all about learning about yourself, learning about your motorcycle. But if you do want to learn more about your motorcycle, learn some of the more technical aspects of the rake and trail and get your geometry set up perfectly, you got to head over to GMD CompuTrack ATL. Those guys will get you helped out as much as you need. But this video was definitely one of the more difficult ones for me to film. Uh, coming from a pro racing background for quite a few years now and also the formal training of a physics education, I get very technical at times. So it was pretty difficult for me to kind of break it down into simple building blocks. And I didn't even cover, you know, 90% of what cornering a motorcycle is, but this is what I think is the most important thing to me anyways. So if you have any questions, drop a comment, send me a message. I will be sure to get back out to you if I said something that was a little bit too confusing or if you want me to expand more on a topic, don't be afraid to reach out. And as always guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.